Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this short video, I'm going to teach you about access control in Snowflake. It was one of the things I pointed out as one of the top five mistakes I see in Snowflake. People get this wrong and it gets very complicated very quickly. So I'm going to share with you how you get the role based access control in Snowflake working for you rather than against you. My name is Adam Morton and when I started using Snowflake way back in 2017, I really found it difficult to get hold of real world content about Snowflake. So my aim with these videos is to help you through my own experiences so you can avoid the cost, costly errors and mistakes that I had to go through to get to this point. If you stay till the end of the video, I also give you some additional resources and links of things that you can go and, and search out and that will continue your learning with Snowflake. And if you find these videos useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. OK, so let's get into talking about the access control in Snowflake. So out of the box, Snowflake comes with five predefined system roles. You can see them on the screen here and I'll briefly talk you through them. So the account admin is the most powerful role available. This administrators the whole of the Snowflake account. The role can view all the credit and billing information on your account as well. And it forms the parent role of a hierarchy. The sysadmin role can create warehouses and databases and all the objects within them, so tables, views, schemas, etc. You then have the security admin, which is designed to cater for the administration of security. This is about the management of granting or revoking privileges to certain roles. You've then got the user admin. This role is a, a child role of the security admin role. It's used for creating roles and users and managing the privileges assigned to them. And finally, the public role. And um, one of the, the final default roles, all users end up in this automatically and it provides you the basic permissions just to log on to the service and some basic object access. So let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail and how it works. So as a user, you could be a member of more than just one role. This is typical across a range of applications you might have used previously. Some systems look at all the roles your users assigned to in order to understand what permissions you have before deciding to perform your requested action. Snowflake is different. It forces you to select a specific role before you run any queries. So for example, let's say you create a new warehouse using the sysadmin role, and now you need to create a new role for a user. If you attempt to perform this operation using the sysadmin role, you'll get an error like the one on the screen where it says you've got insufficient privileges to operate an account. You'll need to switch to either the security admin or user admin role to perform this action. And it's this behavior that forces users to follow a role based access control more tightly. And there's certain benefits to that, but it does make you think a little bit differently from previous systems you may have worked on in the past. So this is what the hierarchy looks like, the five roles out of the box. Roles can be assigned to other roles, creating a hierarchy. Snowflake uses a role based access control or RBAC as a concept. It's quite widely used. Uh, if you've had experience of using it before, there is a risk that it can get complicated very quickly and you end up with a, a, an administration nightmare. So it's very important to do some thinking upfront to avoid that. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the feature called inheritance. So not only can you assign and grant privileges on objects directly to roles, they can also be inherited from other roles. So again, you can see how this complexity, if you don't think things through, um, can create quite an opaque environment in terms of who has access to what. So in the scenario with this diagram on the right hand side, we have a HR schema read only role which can read all of the HR data in the Snowflake database. We have a requirement for the Market and Insight team to establish read-only access to this data just for the duration of the project. So you can see that normally HR, the HR department role and uh, can read only uh, all of the HR data and that's in place. But for this particular project, the Market and Insight um, team wants to wants to be able to read the data as well. So we can simply achieve this by using the grant role to command. So the single command grants the market insight team read only privileges on the HR schema and the data contained within it. So by assigning the market insight role, 
as part of the HR schema read only role, they're able to read all of the data. When we're finished with it, we simply revoke those uh, permissions and everything goes back to normal and they, they can't see it. So that's roles. Let's talk about objects, the object hierarchy. So when a user creates an object in Snowflake, they effectively own that object and can grant access to it. So that concept is known as discretionary access control or DAC. Our back then comes to play as the owner grants privileges on those objects to other specific roles. So here's a basic example. You've got the overall Snowflake account at the top of a number of child roles. So you can see there beneath the Snowflake account, you've got a user, a role, a database and a warehouse. Within that database then you've got objects beneath that. You've got your schema level and then the object contained within that schema. So you're always going to want to extend the role hierarchy out of those five roles that you get out of the box of Snowflake. One important principle to follow here, and this is this is key, this is quite critical, is to separate out the roles which are used to grant access to objects from those roles which are used to contain users. So this is a logical separation that you can adopt as a principle. And following this provides greater flexibility. It leverages that inheritance feature I mentioned earlier and streamlines the overall implementation effort. And so if you begin with this framework in mind from the outset, it makes it easier to capture and organize requirements of your own environment. And it makes the implementation and future administration on a BAU basis far easier. So if you look at the table here, we've got four levels starting at level zero, where that particular role is a system role. So any predefined system roles will go into that level zero and everything rolls up to the system roles. Level one now, we've got something called the main roles. This is when you require groups of the subsequent level two and level three roles, but separated out between different environments, development, test and production, for example. Then the last two roles, and these are critical and very um, different in terms of their implementation and what their purpose is for. So level two functional roles, they contain users only. They may be mapped to roles within an identity provider, such as Okta, for example, which contain groups of users, but those roles only contain users. Then your level three, your final layer, is access roles. They're used as a layer then to assign permissions and privileges to the actual objects within Snowflake. So using this approach keeps everything separate um, and compartmentalized, and it provides an approach which keeps your environment clean and easy to understand. Let's just briefly look at this uh, as part of a, a kind of basic real world scenario. So you can see here we've got the table on the left of the four different levels of roles and it's mapped to logical levels on the right hand side of the diagram where we've got a sysadmin role at the top so that's one of the five out of the box roles. You've got level one domain roles where we've got a production development role and a test development role. As part of that production development level one role, we've got two functional roles which relate to market and insight role in the HR department. And then finally, we've got an access role. So it links back to the example that we're looking at earlier on around the HR schema read only. So this promotes the reuse of roles whilst easing and simplifying ongoing operational management. And I can't stress how important adopting an approach like this, so similar to this is, is going to be to your success. So finally, I just want to point you towards some um, resources. I've got my practice questions for the SnowPro Core Certified Exam on Udemy. Uh, the link is in the comments below the video. Please get in touch on LinkedIn and um, drop me a line and connect. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video and leave some comments. Um, if you want to see some content on Snowflake specific to you in your situation, please uh, let me know. And finally, there's a new book coming soon, Building Solutions of Snowflake, uh, that I'm currently writing at the moment. So I hope you really found this useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop a comment on any of the to topics as I mentioned, and I'll see you next time.